Okay, in today's lecture we will see the basic electronics and we will see the welding. So let's begin. Okay, semiconductor. Semiconductor is a material which has electrical uh, conductivity to a degree between metal and uh, uh, insulator such as glass. So this is a basically in uh, in open condition when we are not adding any impurity then the semiconductor is a very bad conductor of electricity but when we add some impurity in semiconductor it becomes very good conductor uh, and its degree varies between the metal to the glass and uh, it, there are many uses of this semiconductor modern state electronics including transistors solar cells light emitting diode and digital and analog circuits have the many uh, uses of semiconductors Okay, you can see the atom atomic structure of germanium, which is a semi uh, semiconductor. So, uh, in uh, germanium, the outside uh, uh, outer shell has four electrons, and uh, uh, it is a, a bad conductor of electricity. Okay, so this is a structure of germanium. Uh, Okay, when a small amount of impurity is introduced into the germanium crystal, its current conducting characteristic changes rapidly. So, doping it is defined as the process of introducing some type of impurity in germanium and silicon crystals. Okay, germanium and silicon crystals are semiconductors. Okay, uh, the outer cell contains 4 electron in germanium and silicon. Uh, when we add the pentavalent impurity, then... Uh, 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 which which contain five electrons in outer cell just like these are um, uh, bismuth phosphorus antimony uh, sorry ar arsenic so this has pentavalent impurity which can be added to germanium or silicon crystals so i have made a trick but uh, this is a bismuth arsenic and uh, phosphorus uh, th there is a and again there is a trivalent impurity which contains three electron in outer cell just like boron aluminium these are known as gallium indium these are known as the trivalent impurity so when the donor is n type uh, impurity then there is a flow of uh, current in semiconductor due to these three electrons see the pentavalent uh, structure is here so the four electrons uh, share with uh, germanium crystal and uh, one remaining electron travels in the semiconductor and causes the current to flow so there is a uh, flow of current in n type semiconductor is due to free electrons now you can see you can see that there there is a p type uh, uh, doping on germanium crystal so these are indium gallium and uh, uh, there is a uh, three electron in outer cell of this uh, aluminium gallium so aluminium if aluminium is added then the three electrons is there and uh, one hole is uh, there in, uh, in the semiconductor so there is a causes of electricity due to the flow of this hole okay. okay let's see the p injection when the p type and n type semiconductors are joined together then uh, this junction is called the p injection this is also called diode p injection diode and this is known as uh, rectifier see this is a p injection diode and uh, the current is flowing from here to here uh, this is a plus and minus terminal and current is flowing from here to here like this uh, current flows through the circuit uh, but when we put this uh, terminal in opposite direction see this is uh, the opposite direction then in reverse direction there is a no flow of current throughout the circuit the symbol of PA injection is uh, uh, represented by this symbol this is the symbol and this is called uh, forward bias where current is flowing throughout the circuit and this is called reverse bias where there is no flow of current through the circuit and this is called the rectifier which 
which uh, converts AC current to DC current. So this is uh, this is used in application to convert AC current to into DC current. Okay. Now let's see the special diodes. Uh, this is the Jenner diode. Jenner diode is always used in reverse bias and uh, it is used in voltage regulation circuit as shown in figure. Okay, well, voltage regulator circuit may use use hota hai. In tunnel diode, second is tunnel diode. It is used for flip flop gates. And this is third one is the light emitting diode, which is which is used as light indicator in electronic equipment equipment for visual display purposes. Varactor. It is a PN junction diode designed to work at high frequencies. It is used for amplification and switching work purposes. Vector is used for amplification and switching purposes. Similarly, photoconductive cell. It is a also a diode which is used for automatic flashing system in photo cameras. Okay, this is used for automatic flashing system in cameras. Photovoltaic cell. It is a reciprocal device of LED which converts light energy into electrical energy. Okay, we have studied the photovoltaic cell. It is a reciprocal reciprocal of LED diode which converts light energy into electrical energy in diac this is also known as three layer trigger diode and uh, it is used as trigger dipper speed controller for universal moor and in thermal controlling devices so these are the special diodes and now let's see the transistor the transistors are basically uh, to amplify uh, the current uh, these transistors are used there are two types of transistor the pnp and npn so there are three parts emitter base and collector now let's see the field effect transistors field effect transistor is a semiconductor amplifier whose output current is controlled by input voltage whose output current is controlled by input voltage two types of field effect transistors are junction field effect jfet it is the most common and has direct ohmic contact at the gate and metal oxide metal oxide silicon field effect transistor so sometimes uh, in examinations uh, the full form of only this jfet and uh, mosfet is asked so jfet is junction field effect transistor and mosfet is metal oxide silicon field effect transistor okay now let's see the buildings there are different types of building uh, welding with pressure, resistance with pressure, force welding, pressure welding, slurk welding, thermit welding, arc welding, gas welding. Okay, safety in welding. Uh, so these are the basic uh, safety equipments which I am going to show you. But uh, we have already studied these all safety things in our engineering or diploma or ITI, which is very easy part this is called hand shield and uh, which which uh, protects you from the harmful rays of welding and this is made of arc side of assembly uh, sorry D clear uh, fiber gasket clear glass and there are different layers of the glasses which protects the uv rays and the harmful rays this is a respirator mask which can be used to protect yourself from fumes and uh, okay you can see that this is a leather gloves he is wearing leather gloves reinforce the footwear cuffless cuff trousers so he is uh, wearing the safety cloths now let's see polarity in welding uh, when when the electrode is connected, electrode is connected to the negative pole of the supply. The polarity is said to be direct current electrode negative. Okay. Direct current electrode negative. When the electrode is connected, this is an electrode. It is a, if if it if it is a collect connected to this sorry, this is the diagram of the direct current electrode negative. This in this case the electrode is negative and the workpiece is positive so this is called direct current electrode negative direct current electrode negative and uh, another polarity type is when 
when the electrode is connected to the positive pole of the supply the polarity said to be direct current electrode positive see the electrode is in positive and the workpiece is negative so this is called direct current electrode positive okay Okay, remember this when there is a AC current then the 50% heat will be on electrode and 50% heat will be on workpiece. Now let's see the different type of welding positions. Uh, this is a horizontal vertical fillet weld. In this position uh, one plate is in horizontal condition and uh, other is vertical condition. So this, this is a welding. Second is vertical fillet weld. In in this what uh, both the um, the these two plates are in vertical condition. In the overhead fillet weld, uh, see uh, the welder is beneath this uh, horizontal plate, and uh, this is called overhead fillet weld. this is a flat butt weld where uh, the two or plates are in horizontal position this is overhead uh, butt weld uh, where uh, the two plates are in horizontal edge to edge contact and uh, the welder is beneath the plate and this is a vertical butt weld where the two plane are joining edge to edge and the, these are in vertical condition and the last is horizontal butt weld in in this case the plates are plate plates are placed edge to edge so that the joint is horizontal okay you can see different types of joints this is this is edge joint where there is joint between edge to edge this is a corner joint okay this is T joint this is butt and this is lap joint we have seen the welding uh, process this is a, a just a arc welding process um, where you can see this is electrode and uh, a flux coating is there in electrode so we will see the flux okay so electrode wires are coated with the flux and uh, the functions are of flux coating are during the process of welding during the process of welding the flux coating melts okay forming a gas shroud around the arc and slag over the cooling weld metal the weld metal is thus protected from the harmful effect of the atmosphere okay so flux causes uh, uh, form a gas shroud around the arc and slag over the cooling weld metal and causes a, a sealed to protect it from the harmful effect of atmosphere and uh, it, it stabilizes the arc it helps in deoxidizing and refining the metal okay and it reduces spatters to great extent so these are uh, the slag which is formed on the top of the weld reduces the rate of cooling and as result the chances of brittleness okay so slag also work as uh, uh, to uh, slow down the cooling rate and uh, reduces the chances of brittleness of the welding part and the rate of welding is increased because of the increase in the rate of melting okay so it uh, the fluxes also melts with the metal and uh, increases the rate of melting okay defects in welding let's see the what are the different uh, defects in welding so this is a, a common defect undercut you can see there is a just like groove structure during welding process so this is because of uh, too much current overheating the parent metal okay this is a uh, too much there is too much current overheating this parent metal and uh, causing this uh, groove like structure uh, which is called undercut porosity if if gas pores are formed and dist disturbed distributed in the weld metal it is said to be suffer from a defect called porosity okay there is a porous pores in the welding welded area uh, the gases are formed and distributed in the weld metal so this is also a defect this is because of uh, overheated electrode a wrong electrode or moisture content and this is a slag inclusion where the molten flux absorbs oxide from the surface of the parent metal floats on the metal weld okay so this is a slag get uh, trapped in the molten metal causing slag inclusion 
so and again another is a cracks this is due to the effect of cooling or stresses there is a variation in cooling then there will be stress in the welding part and there will be the cracks on welding area so this depends on basically high rate of cooling if there is high rate of cooling then there will be chances of more cracks and high rigidity of joint using wrong electrodes and improper welding techniques spatters the this uh, comprises globules of metal expelled during arc welding on the onto the surface of parent metal on a, or of a welder there is a global structure of metal expelled during arc welding process on the surface of met parent metal of a weld so this is because of the uh, uh, current is too high arc is too long electrode are damp and uh, another is overroll this constitute the overload rolling of the weld metal on the parent metal or weld metal that is not hot enough to allow fusion so there is a over rolling on the on the parent metal so it should be avoided this is causes is because of only excessive deposit of weld metal lack of fusion this refers to the lack of union in the weld so this is uh, due to oxide or any foreign metal on the surface of the plate not being dissolved so this is because of uh, lack of fusion causes uh, crater and cavities these are irregularities in weld metal so this is because of the wrong speed of travel incorrect angle of the electrode poor start and stop now let's see the gas welding in gas welding there is a flame of oxy oxygen and uh, fuel gas and uh, oxygen the fuel gas may be acetylene and uh, there is a flame and uh, one filler rod is used to weld Uh, now there are three types of the flame in first is neutral flame these are the important part okay so in neutral flame uh, you can see that uh, hydrogen and uh, uh, sorry oxygen and uh, acetylene amount are equal so there is a uh, no feeder of uh, uh, acetylene there there will be form formation of feeder there will there is no feeder in case of neutral flame and this is the inner cone and this is neutral flame so its temperature in neutral flame is around 32 degree and 3200 degree centigrade uh, another one is the carburizing flame where acetylene amount is more than oxygen amount so it is making a feeder uh, this is inner core so this is inner core this feeder of acetylene feeder is three times uh, more in length of this inner core and the more amount of acetylene we are using in case of carburizing flame and the temperature is around 3100 degree celsius and uh, last one is the oxidizing flame it has excess oxygen oxygen so this uh, this is uh, much bluer in color color and uh, you can see that uh, in oxid uh, uh, there is inner core uh, darker and shorter than neutral flame this is darker and shorter in neutral flame and there is a much bluer flame in case of oxidizing flame and uh, temperature is around 3300 degree celsius and this is basically used for gas cut cutting purposes okay you can see that the oxygen cylinder which is uh, uh, in color uh, color code for oxygen cylinder is black and for the acetylene cylinder this the color code is maroon now let's see the gas cutting the cutting of a uh, number of processes are used for cutting of steels many of this process depend on the principle of oxidation so this is basically um, by the principle of ox oxidation when any metal gets uh, heated temperature rises and uh, metal gets oxidized when its temperature rises so it works uh, on the principle of oxidation see there is a formation of curve and uh, this this part of the metal has oxidized gases used in gas welding is basically uh, oxy acetylene uh, this is a most widely used type of uh, gas and uh, second is hyd oxy hydrogen it is costly and it is difficult to regulate the flame and uh, oxy oxy propane and oxy natural gases these are the gases which are used for gas cutting Uh, see there is a term called gouging uh, this is uh, just uh, removing a thin metal mm, a narrow strip of metal from the surface of steel plates okay uh, before joining or welding operation 
this is used to remove the thin strip of metal from the surface this this operation is called gouging operation and let's see the brazing operation uh, brazing is a metal joining process where by a filler metal is heated heated above melting point and distributed over between two or more close fitting parts by capillary action okay so the the filler metal is heated and uh, joined with the uh, flame so this is a simple brazing operation where the brass alloys are used as a filler material see this is a type of brazing this is a filler material and this is a flame and uh, the, this uh, gap is uh, joining by the brazing operation uh, the filler material is usually dissimilar metal okay which is used to join these two parts and a good strength is achieved by this uh, brazing operation see these are the brazed joints we have seen the different types of uh, uh, welding process joining process and uh, we will see the types of brazing uh, so first was uh, torch brazing and uh, second is furnace brazing which is ideal for mass production this is used for mass production okay it is a very high power consumption uh, is there uh, this is this is the dis disadvantage uh, high capital cost equipment cost more difficult design consideration high power consumption and there is silver brazing which is a used uh, a silver alloy for joining process and the silver alloy consists of metals like copper zinc and cadmium okay so this is basically used in a tool industry to join the carbide ceramic tools brass welding this is a brass welding there is use of branch a bronze or brass filler rod coated with flux to join steel work pieces okay so the, the disadvantage of uh, uh, this method is to uh, that there is low strength and subjected to high temperature okay now let's see the different types of flux flux based liquid flux powder flux brazing rod with coating of flux flux rod filler rod uh, types of filler material used in brazing operation are aluminum silicon copper silver copper zinc gold silver nickel alloy silver amorphous foil uh, solders now let's see the solders uh, these uh, solders are basically tin and lead alloy and uh, these are uh, simple to use but uh, the joint is very weak as compared to brazing or welding operation and uh, this is a one this is 70% tin and 30% lead when one uh, the temperature is around 188 degree centigrade for for uh, joining process and uh, if the tin is 5% and 95% lead then the temperature will be around 310 degree celsius but the most common general purpose solder solder is known as a 50 50 solder okay which contain 50% lead and 50% tin and melts at approximately 244 degree celsius so for soldering operation there are two types of fluxes used the corrosive and non corrosive so in corrosive ki kind of fluxes there is zinc chloride ammonium chloride hydrochloric acid which are used and for non corrosive these are the resin based resin based fluxes Uh, so non corrosive fluxes uh, we have seen the non corrosive process so uh, suitable fluxes for various materials are for steel zinc chloride is used tin zinc chloride is used brass copper bronze zinc chloride flux is used and uh, resin is also used for brass copper bronze so steel tin brass copper bronze zinc chloride is used but in case of zinc hydrogen chloride hydrochloric acid is used galvanized iron hydrochloric acid is used and for lead the tello and resin is used now let's summarize welding soldering and brazing operation together and compare these three so welding gives strongest joints okay and the soldering is basically weaker and the uh, brazer brazing gives joints stronger than soldering but weaker than welding 
Great temperature is about 3300 degrees centigrade and uh, soldering can be done below 450 degrees centigrade and uh, it may be up to 600 degrees Celsius. So higher temperature is required in welding operation and lowest temperature in soldering operation. So in welding operation work piece to be joined are heated till their melting point. Okay, these are heated. Uh, so th there is no need of heating in soldering and uh, in bridging operation work piece are heated but below their melting point. Okay, there is a heating in welding and brazing, but in soldering there is a no need to heat work pieces. And the third, this point is uh, mechanical properties of base metal may change at the joining due to heating and cooli cooling. Okay, so mechanical properties may be changed. Uh, mechanical properties like ductility, malleability, and uh, strength, toughness, hardness. This may be changed due to the heating and cooling of the welding uh, parent metal. Here parent metal in soldering there is no change in mechanical properties after joining process because there is no heating of parent material and in bridging operation mechanical properties of joined may change but uh, there is a negligible change because there is a low temperature around 600 degrees celsius also a very high skill level is required in welding no, uh, uh, soldering can be done by very low skilled person and uh, skill level required is between other two process uh, heat treatment is generally required to eliminate undesirable effect of welding okay there is high temperature so there may be chances of uh, changes of uh, mechanical properties so heat treatment is also required to maintain its mechanical property and uh, there is no heat treatment required in soldering no heat treatment is required in bridging operation no preheating of work is required before welding as it is done at high temperature Preheating of surface before soldering is good for making good quality joint and preheating is desirable to make joint strong as bridging is carried out at a relatively low temperature. Okay. So this uh, we have completed the welding. In next uh, lecture I will upload important questions. Uh, so please like, comment and more to motivate me. So I will try to help you more uh, and try to help you with more videos. Thank you.